So Harness has probably one of the most comprehensive cloud cost management tools in the market today. But one of the things that we often think about is how do we continue to build what you and the community really need? So today, we're going to talk about an exciting new initiative in FinOps, and not one or two, but three incredible new product reveals. <clears throat> but taking a step back, what does it really mean to achieve excellence in FinOps and cloud efficiency across cost reporting, cost optimization, and cost governance? What are the challenges and hurdles that you face every day? What strategies can help you? And what are the metrics that you can actually use to track that you're making progress in the right direction? Now, the answer to these questions can vary depending on your role, your industry, and your company. But all of these points of view are valuable to all of us. Now, as they say, good judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. But it can also come from learning from each other, which is why the fastest way to fostering progress is through collaboration, and that's with our first initiative of the FinOps Excellence Collective. So this is a collective of cloud ops, FinOps, and engineering leaders who are collaboratively reshaping the landscape of cloud cost management and FinOps. Now, we've had the privilege of hosting these community events across seven cities and counting, with over 100 community leaders. And we've had some incredibly insightful conversations uh, and candid conversations around challenges, best practices, and experiences that have been truly valuable to all of us. And we have many more such community events planned across the US. So if you are the nominee would like to join, just let us know. So what are the topics that come up in some of these community events? Now, as you can imagine, it's a varied set of topics across engineering and finance. Now, while we already support most of these areas, there were three areas that actually stood out to us. First, how do you empower engineers to optimize costs at scale through automation and minimal effort? Second, how do you leverage automation to properly use commitments and maximize ROI? And third, how do you track and manage costs, not just cloud costs, but costs beyond that as well? So all of our product reveals for today will address these three specific areas. But before we get to the first product reveal, <coughs> our cloud asset governance provides cost security and management and, and uh, security management through simple YAML policies. And you don't even have to author these policies, just let AI-powered ADA do them for you. Now, this is across any cloud, any resource, and any action. You can use this to right-size over-provisioned resources, clean up unused resources, enforce tagging compliance, whatever your imagination can conceive. Now, this is an incredibly useful capability. But on the other hand, we also have auto-stopping which automatically detects when any of your non-production resources are idle and shuts them down, only to bring them back up again whenever you need them. And this lets you save to the most granular windows of idleness, cutting your non-prod costs by up to 70%. So we've seen incredible results. But we've heard your feedback on the time it can take to set this up, particularly at scale. <clears throat> and that brings us to product reveal number one. We're combining the power of auto stopping with the flexibility of cloud asset governance to give you much more savings much, much faster. <laughs> so now, with a single asset governance YAML policy, you can create auto stopping rules for any number of resources, not just replicas, in bulk and at scale. All you need to do is define filters for the resources that you want to onboard, and we do the rest. So we infer whether your VM is behind a load balancer and which one. We infer which host name is used to access that particular VM. We infer whether, that, whether the setup requires an auto-stopping proxy or not. All you need to do is create a single YAML policy. What would otherwise have required 100 auto-stopping rules for 100 VMs now just requires one YAML policy, and that's it. And we'll have Aditi show us a quick demo of how this will work. Thanks, Ravi. 
Now let me take you to the day in a life of harness engineer. This is my typical setup of AWS where I have all my databases, my backend and my UI running. And I use this QA environment to test out all my builds out there. But as you know, every time to just come up and come back, close the machines on this is a tiresome process. So for that matter, I use auto stopping rules. Auto stopping rule is a very powerful way to configure a rule on any of your resources across any of the clouds where you decide and then automatically shuts down the machine when it's idle and comes uh, and brings it back up when it's not needed or when it's needed. So here in the, uh, in the graph, you can see all the savings across all the rules and the total amount of spend. Now to configure this, it's a simple process where you define the rule and you define the resources on which you want to apply this rule onto and then maybe you select the on-demand or spot instances and then just to do the configuration and that's it. But doing this for each and individual VM is kind of a very cumbersome process. So in Harness now we have introduced asset governance and bulk saving, uh, and bulk savings. In the asset governance, we can just simply define a policy basis which we can just configure all these auto stopping rules in one go. This is an overview dashboard for asset governance where we can see uh, all the rules and all the con uh, enforcements and evaluations here. So these are the set of rules which are defined and I would for this demo use this particular policy where I have the list of all the EC2 in the environment that I just showed you. I have used the tag filter as QA. So all the machines where I, which is tagged as QA will be automatically listed once I do the right run and select the instance and the region. So once I do the run, it will just quickly pull up all my uh, instances that are tagged as a QA and it will do the dynamic filtering every time I would just add another instance on the tag with the QA. Generally, when we would run this, it would just pull up all the list of all the resources in the detailed view and you can just see all the lists listed out correctly. Now the magic comes into picture when we are introducing actions in the asset governance policy. So here in my policy, I just updated it with one action of type auto stopping. As you can see, with just one command, I can just now go and create all these auto stopping rules which I used to do manually for each and every VM in just one go. So with the filtering, uh, the list is already procured and on top of this, I'm just putting an action of auto stopping which would instantaneously create all the auto stopping rules for all these VMs. So once it will just quickly, I do a dry run it here and it will just take like a minute or so and it will just quickly create all the uh, auto stopping rules for all the machines which are tagged as QA. Now here you can see a cumulative list of all the auto stopping rules. Now from here, I can just simply go and open up one of the auto stopping rules and then I can just see the whole rules are created in the same UI. So in the same dashboard of auto stopping, we can see all the rules created. So it could be for your 20 VM, 30 VMs or whatever filters you put in. All the rules are created in the same UI. And once the rules actually come into picture, you can actually start seeing the savings number. Like this is on one of my older machines. So you can see the savings number actual spend on an individual rule basis. So to summarize, you can just now go ahead and create a simple YAML based policy to create all these auto stopping rules at bulk with the dynamic tagging support and the unified UI to, to be seen in the same place. Pretty powerful, isn't it? Back to you. Thanks, Aditi. Now, commitments are a great way to cut your cloud bills in exchange for long-term committed usage. But with all of the different options that are out there, with just EC2, with, with just AWS, you have EC2 and compute savings plans, you have standard and convertible RIs. How do you pick the right one? And with your compute spends going up and down every month, how do you make sure that your commitments are actually keeping up with all of these changes in compute spend? And if you're doing this manually, how do you make sure that there's no costly human error? And that brings us to product reveal number two, the commitment orchestrator. So this is leveraging intelligent automation to fully automate the purchasing and management of all of these commitments on your behalf. So this will maximize savings, maximize commitment utilization, and maximize compute coverage. So we will take actions on your behalf every single day and give you granular visibility into tracking the results. And we'll have Aditi show us a demo of how this will work. Thanks, Ravi. As a financial analyst, the first question that comes up into everybody's mind is to understand how the cost is actually even getting breaking down, uh, like in the compute spend and all the purchases that we've made at the beginning or the financial year or in between, however it is. 
how much of it is actually getting covered through the commitments and how much are we missing or over utilizing any of the resources so to help you understand that once you set up the connector to ccm it automatically and intelligently pulls up the data and shows you this dui in a clean format where you can clearly see what your compute spend is and what your compute coverage is now in general most of the cloud providers have various formats but primarily it's mostly classified into three where you have savings plans where you commit for a dollar value at the beginning then you have reserved instances where you are reserving certain instances that you know you would be using and on demand are just like your express highway you can use them as you need but of course at a much higher cost so the idea and the goal is to incre increase your coverage spend uh, through that so that you can you can have a maximum utilization meaning that if your spend is 100 hundred dollars you would want to cover it as much as possible through savings plans and ri so that you can reduce your cloud costs and maximize your savings now with this dashboard you can actually understand all your cloud spend and coverage across your savings plans reserve instances and on demand it shows you a very detailed and granular visibility across your instance families different regions across and you can even drill down with a particular instance family and then you can see the cost compute coverage and the savings for that particular instance uh, across the day on day basis or you can even filter it down further and see the commitment utilization score of all the instances across different regions now the first part is done you have a good visibility now what's the second thing you want to do the second thing is to automate this whole flow because today it's a very cumbersome and very complicated process to calculate which rs to buy which to convert and what is the savings plan coverage so to do that we are now introducing the setup flow which is completely automated in three single steps all you need to do is define the coverage percentage for example in my case i sh i was at 40% but i want my coverage to be 70% because why should i pay more for that so i want to set it to 70 and from this 70 i want to further split it down between coverage uh, with, between compute savings plans and convertible rs so there is a dis uh, distinction i can do you can just simply roll out and see as per your needs and then you had can continue you can actually even go and exclude certain instances which you don't want the commitment orchestrator to take into consideration like for example here i'm removing these two instances and that's it here it would just give you a review summary of what the compute coverage today was and where it will actually lead to how much is your current compute spend and what would be the target and what would be your potential saving not just that we also ensure that we are not buying in bulk so we are we have taken extreme guardrails to ensure that the buying plan happens on a daily staggered basis along with that we just buy for one year and the payment strategy is set towards the end of the year so that if in case the, those uh, commitments are no longer needed we can just end it at the end of the year so that you don't actually run into the problem of over commitments and uh, wastage of resources so it's as simple as that and once you assign as the permission to do that we can just simply go ahead and buy or on your behalf you can view absolute detailed uh, history of all the action that have been taken on the accounts behalf in terms of your different events and can read through which convertible machine was converted to which uh, instance and why and it all takes into consideration about your daily compute spend on an active basis so it's not a decision taken on like a set of data but it is on an active ongoing basis so that really helps you move the whole automation piece out there and this makes you super super comfortable into making your compute uh, coverage to an gate extent and commitment utilization to hundreds back to you ruby <laughs> Thanks, Sadhvi. <clears throat> Now we know that about a third of all cloud spend is wasted. Now it's actually no different for non-cloud spend as well. In just 2023 alone, we'll have 200 billion dollars in SaaS spend. So with so much of non-cloud spend and so much of wasted non-cloud spend, it's important to track all of these costs together in a unified way. And that brings us to product reveal number three: the universal cost adapter. Now we've always had granular and complex reporting for AWS, Azure, and GCP, and we're now extending this to non-cloud costs as well. So you can extern, uh, you can ingest external cost data from any source and manage them from within Harness. And Rohit will walk us through a demo of how this will look. Thank you, Ravi. So this is the current state of business intelligence that CCM has to offer. We pull in costs from AWS, GCP, and Azure. we break these costs down contextually and hierarchically in this example we've broken down the costs of the the entire cost estate into each of these different departments 
all the way down to the individual team level within these departments. We also have a high level breakdown of metrics like percentage spread of costs across different cloud providers. We also have spend analysis over time. You also have the flexibility to slice and dice data across different cloud constructs. In this example, we've broken it down by different cloud accounts and different products. Our, our solution for BI is extremely customizable. It has flexible reporting and granular alerting. It's not just comprehensive, it's a total game changer. But today, we're taking this to a whole new level. I'm extremely thrilled to announce our latest innovation, Universal Cost Adapters. With this, you'd be able to bring in costs from external SaaS vendors like Snowflake, Datadog, MongoDB, even OpenAI. You can also bring in costs from other cloud providers which we do not support out of the box, and also your favorite custom cost metrics from your on-premise data centers and for various other use cases. Now picture this, the best-in-class reporting powered by the universal cost adapter. It's going to be FinOps Unleashed. So what we have here is the overall spend posture across your estate, not just CSPs, but your overall SaaS providers as well. We have the percentage split across, these, across the SaaS posture, and also costs of each of these vendors over time. So with the universal cost adapter, here we have ingested costs from Snowflake, Datadog, and MongoDB, and have showcased costs over time. But what we are really enabling you with is not just the visibility aspect. We are enabling you with advanced analytics. So on the cost that we have ingested, we can now do things like forecasting, trend analysis, and also add metrics like means, medians, standard deviations, and so much more. With all this, how granular can we get with this data? Is it just a single data point at a very high level? Absolutely not. So here we have an example for MongoDB and how we have drilled down the cost from, that we've ingested from MongoDB. We have the cost breakdown across different regions how much am I spending in Oregon region? How much am I spending in the LA region? And the cost of MongoDB by different SKUs that it offers. How much am I spending for my M10, M40s? What is my SSD spend? What is my cost of network ingress and egress? And I can also see very quickly what was that latest cluster that was added, which is costing the cost, which is resulting in this cost increase from September 5th onwards. And also scrutinize costs across different MongoDB projects. All of this without ever leaving the Cloud Cost Management Platform. Pretty powerful. Yeah, back to you, Ravi. Thanks, Sohit. <clears throat> so with that, our, our exciting new FinOps initiative and three incredible new product reveals, we strive to maintain or we strive to remain the gold standard with the most comprehensive cloud cost offering in the market today and tomorrow. So if tackling cloud costs is a priority for you, let's connect. Thank you.